<laughs> Let's imagine of a woman who cares a lot about freedom, about dignity and nature, and who earns her livelihood by singing on the bank of the river, by conducting tourism on the navigable waterways of the Rio Grande River Valley. One sad day, suddenly she noticed huge shipping containers are being dumped on the banks of the Rio Grande River. Specialized artificial intelligence infrastructure materials are being erected on the bend and uh, uh, banks of the Rio Grande River. She noticed the beautiful silver uh, small fishes, the bobcats, the Texas cats, the ocelots, all uh, the indivisible part of the ecology of the Rio Grande Valley, they're getting missing day by day. And also the navigable river water, where she used to seeing wading across the river valley is getting drying up. Both she and the river, they're facing an uncertain consequence. There's no difference between both of them. Standing between a uh, living, vibrant borderland cities and virtual artificial intelligence enabled border walls, both have the same fate. And along with them, you know, the ecology, they are also victim of various type of human made constructions. And those construction are being made, getting exemption from uh, various uh, politically motivated enacted laws that disregards the environmental regulations and various policies, which is important for the environment. Unfortunately, this is not a story anymore. It is also very unfortunate matter that this real fact is not being reflected in any data set or any large language models that are being used in artificial intelligence modeling, which are being used for water sustainability and impact of climate change in the borderland areas. This is the catch. This is the place where I, Rub Muhammad Rahman, as a graduate political uh, philosophy student, would like to contribute. I'd like to share my philosophical insights to the data sets, to the large language models that are being used uh, to create artificial intelligence for surveillance infrastructure issues and for other borderlands issues. Now, you might ask that why I trying to drag data issues regarding artificial intelligence manner. The thing is that if you go through, uh, those of you who are, who are from STEM background, if you go through the large language models or artificial intelligence or any kinds of data set, you'll find that uh, an indivisible part of these borderlands, women, animals, ecology, river, they're not being represented properly while research uh, being conducted on sustainability or climate change impact on the borderland. Because if it really were used and utilized, why there are so many dams are getting constructed in these river valleys? Why nobody is speaking about that women, river, nature, animals who used to roam across hundreds of miles of these borderland areas, disrespect of the country of origin, Mexico, United States, why they're getting confined in a bottleneck area? This is the problem and loophole areas that I, a philosopher, graduate student, try to contribute. What I would like to bring from philosophy to contribute in artificial intelligence or STEM research on you know, that uh, surveillance instruments or surveillance mechanism issues. I'd like to bring two of the philosophical concepts. Uh, I'd like to orient two of the concepts to the STEM background researchers and STEM background research institutions. One 
ecofeminism to relational egalitarianism. Now, why I would like to introduce ecofeminism to the borderland? Because it is very much relevant. Because first, women and nature are indivisible part of the borderland. And if we would like to safeguard the river, we have to consider this. And also because if you like to safeguard women and nature, we have to get out from the machismo type of thinking background when it comes about the conservation and protection of the biodiversity or, or the ecology. Because the patriarchal nature of environmental protection, the patriarchal nature of protecting the border areas, we have consequences. What is happening to female? What is happening to the river valleys? This is the reason I'd like to introduce these uh, two concepts. Another thing is that why I'd like to bring relational egalitarianism, because these border river valleys, not only Rio Grande, there are other rivers also, uh, Rio Alamar, which is situated in Mexico. These rivers at one time were connecting points for people who were coming from the north, who were coming from the south. They used to meet there. They used to drink water. They used to use those water resources for their livelihood, for their culture. Some of them might you, uh, consider those water resources, aquatic resources, as sacred. Now, these border river valleys are now a dragging line and now a battlefield for uh, thinking about how to demarcate uh, the north from the south, how to build borders through the mountain ranges from east to west. This is the thing that we'd like to introduce, we'd like to philosophically infuse into the STEM background, into the data set. There is a poem of Alfred Tennyson. Time marches on, but memory stays, torturing silently the rest of our days. I'd like to be optimistic. Many years from now, I don't like to painfully see that once there was a river on the southern part of this country or on the north, east, west part of Mexico, uh, their people, especially women, they used to sing, they used to wade across, they used to earn the livelihood, they used to consider th those resources as sacred river. I don't like to think in that pessimistic way. I want to be optimistic. That's why I'm trying my best to introduce philosophical insights to stem backgrounds regarding artificial intelligence issues. Thank you all for kind listening. Yeah, sure. I recognize like some authors from eco eco feminist perspective that we can go over and, and yeah. Yeah, uh, the thing is that uh, regarding feminist perspective, we know what's happening in the borderland areas, femicide, you know, machismo behavior, what is happening in the macula dora. The thing is that uh, I have only one minute. So you, we all know about South Dakota uh, access pipeline case, right? You know how valiantly they fought for the river misery. I think we, sh we should take it as a precedent. We should feel proud of it. And we should not uh, silent our voice. What is important is to remain vibrant, remain vocal, regarding what is happening. Because if you remain silent, if you don't speak, one one day the consequence will be like Rio Alamar. You all know the situation of Rio Alamar. The 1980s people used to 
uh, spend family happy time over there. Now it is nothing. It is just a sewage. So the thing is that we, we need to continue raising our voices. And this is only the, so I mean, there is no shortcut. This is only the way that we can champion the dignity of both gender, both the aquatic resources. Thank you.